back to Dimitra's Dishes. So today I'm going to teach you how to make Napoleon hearts. And it's the perfect dessert to make if you're not a chocolate lover, especially on Valentine's Day, which is right around the corner, or date night, or really any time. It's such a delicious dessert. Um, it's really popular at our bakery. It's one of our best sellers. Um, we make regular Napoleons and Napoleon hearts right around Valentine's Day. And I'm going to take you over the ingredients so that way we can get started so you can make this really, really quickly. So you need a sheet of puff pastry, and they sell this in the freezer section of every supermarket. Um, just get it, and you just need one sheet, let it thaw out, and come to room temperature. Um, you need some whole milk for the pastry cream that we're going to make, some eggs, unsalted butter, sugar, cornstarch, a little bit of cream, a tiny bit of, a tiny pinch of salt, pure vanilla extract, and then to put it all together, of course, we're going to need some fresh strawberries that we're going to slice, a little bit of apricot jam, and um, confectioner sugar. So we're going to begin by getting our puff pastry ready for the oven. And we're going to do that. Let me move this out of the way. We're going to, we're going to make sure, you have to make sure that your oven is preheated to 425 degrees. This bakes at a really high temperature. And we're going to poke holes with a fork all around this. That's good. It has holes all around it. I'm going to put another piece of parchment paper on top of this and then two baking sheets to add weight to this. If you don't have two baking sheets, you can put one baking sheet and then maybe like a heavy pie dish or a few ramekins or something on here. Anything that's going to weigh it down. I'm going to put this in my preheated oven for about 20 to 25 minutes or until it's nice and golden brown and completely cooked. And then I'll show you what that looks like when it comes out. In the meantime, after I put this in, we're going to make the pastry cream. All right, so we're going to begin by putting our whole milk in our saucepan. And pastry cream is really easy to make. It's one of those, one of those recipes that goes in so many things. It goes in eclairs and napoleons and cakes. And it's a recipe that is similar to vanilla pudding. My vanilla pudding recipe, I would say, is much richer than this. So that's why I'm teaching you how to do this so you don't have to make that. It has much less cream in it. So we are going to heat up the milk and we're going to put a pinch of salt like we do in all of our dessert recipes. And while that's going to come up to a simmer, I have my egg yolks here. I'm going to add sugar to them. We mix them around. I'm going to put my quarter cup of cream in here. and our cornstarch. That's going to really thicken it all up nicely. And I'm just going to whisk this up until it's all combined and nice and thick and like a pale yellow. And it should take just a few minutes to do that while our milk is getting ready to come up to a nice, nice hot simmer. All right, so my eggs and cream and sugar, my egg yolks, my cream, my sugar, and my, what else is in here, cornstarch, is all done beating. It's all incorporated. It's nice and thick. It's the way it should be. Our milk has come to a simmer. And now what we do anytime we have a custard or a pudding or a pastry cream in this case, you want to bring the temperature up of the eggs and never add them directly to the milk. We're going to add a little bit of hot milk to this so that way they don't, you know, scramble. Scrambled eggs and custard, not good guys. like that, add all the rest of it, whisk this all up. And now we're going to add it back to our saucepan and over medium, low heat, we're going to bring it to a boil and then it's going to thicken and become beautiful. Then we're going to add the last two ingredients to it. So you're going to carefully add this all back in. And you don't want to step away from this. You have to continue to stir this because if it sticks to the bottom, you guys, and burns, it's going to be gross and you're going to have to start all over. So keep whisking this while it thickens and I'll show you what it looks like as soon as that happens. Clean this up a bit, move it out of the way. All right, so just like that, it's literally been just a few minutes and it started to boil and as you see, it's thickened really, really nicely, beautifully. So at this point, I'm going to turn the heat off 
And I'm going to add my butter in, about a tablespoon of unsalted butter. It's going to make it extra silky and smooth. And my teaspoon and a half of vanilla extract. Make sure pure vanilla extract always. Whisk it all up. And then we're going to strain it just to make sure that anything that hasn't cooked properly in there that's not nice and smooth comes out. So we are just going to now pass it through our strainer. Just like this. And this just ensures that any little bits of egg or cornstarch, whatever that have hardened while, while cooking, they just get out and you have a really nice and smooth and silky custard. That's it. That's how simple it is to make pastry cream, you guys. Literally under 20 minutes and it's done. So our pastry cream is done just like that. Now, I could definitely go to town with this and eat this all, but I won't because I need it for my Napoleons. So I'm going to take some plastic wrap and cover it so it doesn't form a skin on top. Just like we do with our custards always while they're hot. We kind of cut the plastic, put it on there and press it onto the custard. Uh, refrigerate this for a couple of hours until it cools down. And then once our pastry sheet is ready, we're going to put it all together. All right, so a few points. <clears throat> the puff pastry is ready. And I said 25, 25 minutes, but it actually took between 35 to 40 minutes. Sometimes it could even take 45 minutes. And it's all about the color. This is the color that you want, OK? So if your oven cooks really fast and it's, you know, it takes 25 minutes like it does in our bakery, then hallelujah, that's great. But this oven at, in my house cooks like probably everybody else's normal uh, kitchen oven. And it took me about 40 minutes at 425 to bake. But this is the color you're looking for. You want it to be golden brown. You want it to be thin, just like this. So it's way down and smells so good. It smells nutty and really delicious. Second, my, my pastry cream has uh, set in the refrigerator. And it's nice and cool. But what happened to it and what might happen to yours if you cook it a little too much or put a little tad bit more cornstarch or just because whatever this might happen is it was very, very thick and kind of like all like in one big massive clump. It wasn't smooth. So what I did was I just took out my hand held mixer and with the beaters attached to it, I just beat, um, beat it until it was nice and smooth. I added just like a tablespoon more of cream to it. You could add milk, that's fine, and made it nice and smooth again. If you have a tabletop like KitchenAid mixer, you could just pop it in there and just let it mix and it'll smooth it out all over again. But just to let you know, this kind of stuff happens. Don't get scared. You can fix it. It's still delicious and thick and lovely. I also sliced my strawberries while my puff pastry was waiting, so those are ready and good to go. I have a pastry bag, which if you've been watching my show, it's good to invest in one of these. They are used a lot and make your life easy. If you don't have one, no worries. You can use a spoon or a Ziploc bag, but this makes it really pretty and it has a star tip, and I just like it. That's kind of like what we use at the bakery, so I use it here. Now. How many Napoleons you get out of this will depend on what size cookie cutter you have. So today I'm using heart shape because it is Valentine's Day week. It's around the corner in a few days. And so I want to make them, you know, Valentine's Day themed. I'm going to use heart shape. I'm going to use my small heart cutter, cookie cutter, but you can use whatever you have and you can double this recipe. You can triple it. The best thing about it is that you can make the puff pastry and the pastry cream the day before. You could put the whole thing together the day before, and it is just a great um, recipe to know how to make. And if you don't want to make these into heart shape, just cut it into equal rect rectangular pieces. Each Napoleon has three layers, so just you know, go from there. But I'm going to use this cute cookie cutter that I have right here. And I'm going to press it down. Some of them are going to come out right away. And some of them are going to need help from my handy dandy spatula. All right, so you can do whatever you want with these leftover pizzas. You can dip them in your coffee or your tea and eat them with some jam. Or you could even crumble them and like put them on top as a decoration. I'm just going to leave these on the side 
I won't be using them today. And now, because of the heart-shaped cookie cutter that I had, I'm gonna get four cute little heart-shaped Napoleons. Um, I have another cookie cutter at the bakery that I was able to get uh, five or six out of it. So again, it depends. And I like the way these are small, little, individual size. They don't, they don't have to be giant. It, it is a cute dessert, it's heart-shaped, so I feel like it should be cute and small the way these are right here. I'm going to fill my pastry bag with the pastry cream. And let me wipe my hands. Okay, I'm going to begin by putting this on the side. I'm going to begin by putting apricot jam on all of the hearts that are going to be on the bottom. I'm just going to smooth it out with my little spatula. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> just like that. And these are very, very crumbly because they're cooked perfectly. So you don't want to lift these up too many times. Try to lift them up as few times as possible. Otherwise, they're going to fall apart like they should. They're not supposed to be hard and chewy. Otherwise, they won't taste good. These are supposed to kind of like crumble as you eat them and break. And you're supposed to see all of the layers that are in the puff pastry. And they're supposed to be very, very nice and flaky. So don't rush in your baking time, you guys. Okay, make sure you bake them until they're nice and golden brown like this. That we get the same texture that I have here. Now we're going to put the sliced strawberries. Now you can use blueberries. You can use raspberries, blackberries. Whatever your favorite berry is, go ahead and use it. I think strawberries are really pretty in this. Now, with my pastry bag that's filled with the pastry cream, I'm going to make a V-shape, which is also a heart shape, right? That's it. I have all this pastry cream left over. Gee, wonder what I'm going to do with it. So now I'm just going to take with my spatula each layer sort of press it down. Look at how beautiful these look. Now, for the final touch, I have my plate here, have my powdered sugar, or confectioner sugar, whatever you want to call it. I'll take one of these beautiful Napoleons. Look at that. That is perfection right there. And sprinkle lots of powdered sugar over it. Because the best part of this dessert is that it's not ultra sweet. The puff pastry sheets are not sweetened at all. So all of the sweetness is going to come from the strawberries and the jam and the pastry cream and this powdered sugar on top. It's a perfect, very light and airy dessert to have after like a heavy meal or just to have at any time of the day with like a cup of coffee or something. Look at that perfection. It's that easy. That simple and that quick. Go on my website, www.demetriusdishes.com. Make this recipe. I love to read your comments, so post comments. And also, I want to thank everyone for subscribing to my YouTube channel. Yay, we've reached a milestone. We have over 500 subscribers. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching my show. Keep watching, sharing, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Actually, let me show them how, it, how you can cut into this baby. Let me show you before we go how easy it is to eat. Look at how flaky and how beautiful it just breaks perfectly. I'm going to take this top part right here. So light, so yummy, so flaky. Bye guys, hurry up and make it.